all of these UPS and I still don't have my package. Good morning everybody. Um, today it's actually morning. So today I am going to be buttoning up the sedan. I know I've said it a few videos ago that I was buttoning it up but today I am going to um, jack up the front of the car, double check all the bolts and uh, suspension that was removed, uh, double check the axle nut. I know I forgot to hammer in the uh, the tab for the axle nut to not back itself out. So um, definitely gonna have to do that. But I wanna make sure that the car doesn't have any type of clunky noise. I gotta double check the cross member because that came out. Um, but first, right now, I am headed to um, my friend's job to uh, grab some lunch with the guys that I haven't seen in like two weeks so um, I was gonna head to the junkyard and just kind of roam it but I just realized because I uh, kind of left a little bit late I uh, forgot my tools in the CRX so no tools no yard and this car is driving really slow in front of me and swerving so swerve cuz Asian driver now I have the rights to say that because I am Asian too. But yeah, I'm gonna grab some lunch with the boys and then uh, when I get back home, I'm gonna get down to business and see what's in store for you today. So I just changed this to wide mode and uh, let's see how this works. So, I am uh, headed back home now. The, the the guys wanted to eat Safeway because they heard sandwiches over there are pretty good, and they are. Um, I used to eat over there from my last job, which is also down the street. And uh, we went over there, but the old lady was like so old she couldn't keep up. I felt super bad for her because we kept talking about how late the guys were gonna be. Because I ain't got a clock in for shit, so I ain't worried about um, you know penalties and shit. But um, I still had a great talk with the guys. Um, you know in the car ride all the way over there and uh, I haven't even touched my burrito it's a breakfast burrito that I always get over there at Safeway every time I'm at Safeway and uh, it's like I said it's pretty bomb build your own you know sandwich whatever but um, I gotta go to Wells Fargo right now deposit some money because um, I've been using my credit card and uh, <laughs> never really paid attention to what's left in there uh, there's only 13 bucks, so I gotta go put some money in from uh, selling the carbon fiber hood so I can not overdraft when I don't think when I buy things. So, I'll do that real quick, probably take a nibble out of my burrito, and then I'm gonna head home and start working on the Ford Run. Oh, it's still on widescreen. Um, so, I don't know if you guys can hear this. I'm gonna stick it on top of the tire and I'm gonna shake the car back and forth. I don't know if you guys can hear it. So what I'm trying to do today is figure out what that is, tighten it all up. All the bolts that I've tightened up, axle, super torqued down with the bar, um, hammered in the uh, tab to lock it in 17 underneath pull the cotter pin out and tighten up the 17 on the bottom tighten up the 17 on the upper control arm uh, 17 on the caliper 17 on the radius rod to the lower control arm and also the one that goes into the front cross member itself I've tightened up the 217 on the cross member to the frame rail as well as the 217 for the subframe to the frame rail I've tightened up the 17 on the top for the upper control arm and the 214 for the shocks uh, and I think that's pretty much it other than the, other than these 10 mils right here but these are nothing this is definitely tightened that was never touched the axle you can kind of hear it like but that's not the same noise that I'm hearing when you're bouncing on the car up and down. But I'm pretty stumped right here. Um, sometimes I hear it in my CRX, and then when I take it all apart and you know put another motor in it, put it back together, I don't hear it anymore. I don't understand the logic behind that, but I don't know 
what else is causing this. So, fuck. But now, without the engine on, and like me dry humping the fucking car in the front, propped on the jack on the bottom, you can still hear that clunking noise. I don't know if that is normal, but I have no idea where it's coming from. The, the 14 on the lower control arm to the subframe is also tightened down. And I can hear it clear like right here, right here in the back. So I'm not 100% sure why I'm hearing it here when there's nothing there. This one, this is like a big slap to the face. Damn it, it's still on freaking widescreen. <clears throat> Check this out. I was looking at it. I figured they were the same. I've never touched the suspension. I didn't think of it. And if I was to see which way, this way. Holy shit, this thing wasn't even fucking tight. Oh my god. I hope and I pray that this is my freaking problem. Oh my god, this thing is not even. You're kidding me. <sighs> okay, now let's hump it. Oh, not there anymore. Wow. So that one's the same. I'm gonna tighten that one up as well and put the wheel back on, go for a drive, and hopefully that fixes the issue so I can move forth with more progress on this car today. Good news. So the clunky noise is gone. Um, the battery was able to turn on without the battery pack, so that's good. But yeah, probably gonna move on to the, uh, possibly the muffler and extend it out. I don't think we're ever gonna use this uh, exhaust again because it's for the RT, it's bent for the RT, and I might just cut this back half right here and use about five inches on that straight that's a straight it's a curve right here that's a straight it curves right there and then it's a straight right here so I may cut that because I was just under the car to kind of take a quick look on how far I got to extend it um, got my toolbox back so I was offloading the truck and now all my crap is back but anyways so I'm here under the car. Um, this is one of the tip from an old muffler I had that rotted and literally, literally this back half fell off. So I can use this section right here. So from the tip of, uh, what you might call that? Thing to the back bumper, we're looking at about seven inches so that's definitely a seven inch straight that I can utilize so I'm probably gonna use seven inches from here and then use a seven inch cut off the other pipe in the back pull these off right here which are held by 10 mils and get the flux core back out here and uh, try to get it out to the back bumper cut off the pipe I need off the one from the backyard um, this one right here is actually pointed down, so I'm gonna have to weld this at some kind of angle. Um, I broke the 10 mil that's on this one, as well as the one on that one right there. But you know what, I'll just tack it in place, I'm not worried about it. Not, not trying to make it all pretty, but this one slips right over the left side, and I can just angle it up like, somewhat like that. Um, it's lined up with the bumper. This one right here, I'm gonna have to weld it at an angle as well. But once I, okay, that one's kind of in place. So 
once I uh, you know hold it in place I'm going to tack it in and then uh, try to get these chrome tips to line up somewhat and then um, fully weld them all the way in um, ideally I just wanted to stick out the backlight so now I gotta go get the welder and just tack them in place get them all nice and straight and then fully weld it in The flux core works and all, man, but but damn, they're like burning my skin. And all of these, uh, you see it on the floor right here? All these are from like the well flash from, I don't know. Muffler is extended, perpy welded again, but you know what? I don't see any light in there. And that one, I tried my best to weld all the way around you know the pipe but it's definitely out the bumper so now you know it has a muffler quickly turn it on real quick make sure it doesn't sound all retarded hey we golden I fucked up let me show you guys what I did. Curiosity struck and uh, I decided to quickly polish the trunk and see what kind of results I'd get. And this is how the car is currently as far as the paint. This was a quick pass with the Suds Delete compound. And I feel like now that this is polished out, I can't let that be the only part of the car that's polished and then i went to the quarter like an idiot so now that's all shiny but this isn't and then if you go back here that's the compound working its magic i think there's going to be a whole video of detailing this car now so screw me mailman showed up and i heard him scan something and I was like, oh, that's definitely a package. And I have a package right here. This was sent to me from Kevin. Uh, I'm assuming MA is Massachusetts. And uh, USPS has been delaying this package. It was supposed to be delivered on Monday. And it is now Friday. Let me show you guys what's in here. Pretty excited to tell you the truth because I've been speaking to him. Shout out to... Uh, I've been speaking to him about, um, you know, welding and stuff like that because he's also in a learning stage just like me and we're helping each other, sharing some tips and stuff and whatever we find out to help us better our um, welding abilities. This is real dangerous because it is super sharp. Not like some of them other people who use like hammer and shit to smash their package open, but you know gotta be proper it, it, it even has my name engraved on there because people like me we care about a lot of things huh? it's probably in here okay here we go ooh well packaged ooh Yes, this right here is a gas lens kit for my welding machine, WP-17 Torch. It's got the gas lens for 1 16th, and it is a glass cup. This is awesome because this will definitely help me see my arc a little bit more. Um, the only downside about these, um, if you don't have like a torch holder or something, and you drop this or whatever the case may be, you can shatter this. This, I believe, is a uh, a 10 or a 12 cup. Uh, will definitely help me get better gas coverage. Um, please excuse my coke finger. <laughs> but this will definitely help me get some gas coverage. Uh, see my arc 
um, a lot better when I'm welding, you know, like on a curve or something like that. And my head and helmet can't really go with the flow of, you know, sightseeing of the arc. But this will definitely help me with better gas coverage. Um, huge shout out to uh, Kevin for sending me this kit. He uh, he said he accidentally bought two. I don't know how you accidentally buy two, but um, I don't know if he's on the channel. But he is definitely on uh, Instagram as Hatch22. Give him a follow. If you guys are welders, please help the guy. He He's in the same boat as me. We're both trying to learn. And uh, he has a J32 or J-series hatch. So definitely check that out. It's, it's pretty damn hard. Um, also, again, shout out to my Campbell fam because I support you guys like you guys support me. So thank you for this, man. I truly appreciate it a ton. And um, hopefully I can set up my welding machine and uh, get to using this real soon. So I'm about to go to my friend's house right now, uh, Turbo Ellis Hatch. And... Um, I got in the car running a while ago and for some reason it's getting no pulse to the injectors now so I'm gonna go and check it out because I do not want the car to be sitting for another two years so I want to go out there and try to help him uh, get the car up and running again so that way he can get it all ready tuned and um, up and going for next season and uh, I think I I don't think I'm gonna be posting any more with the sedan because it's practically done I I just gotta like maybe give it a wash or something and then maybe another day if I find the time I'll I don't know I thought this would be a good thumbnail custom baby <laughs> all right I forgot who it was that was uh, only coming on to my channel to watch my videos to figure out what music am I listening to next I listen to I listen to 102.1 cuz I love the older music not the shit that's playing nowadays on the radio so this car is not um, what he told me was it's not getting pulsed to the injectors um, which is kind of weird because I worked on this car a couple months ago and I redid all the wiring as far as this portion that went into the car because it was like uh, done incorrectly and the car fired over and ran perfectly fine before I left that night, drove it on the block. Um, so what he told me was he swapped the distributor out because the one he had was, was his friend's. So he bought a brand new one and went to go turn it on and uh, now it doesn't fire. He said he probed it, it or he said he took out the injectors, you can see, and uh, tried firing it and there was no fuel coming out at all. Um, so i just probed to make sure that the injector resistor wires they were all getting its connection and getting the power um, it's supposed to but uh, it's kind of hard to work with something like this because it's it's uh, it's a rat's nest and it's kind of hard to diagnose a car when everything's all taken apart so right now i'm currently putting everything back together and then um go from there and see what the car is actually doing so i can further diagnose the issue So, I was on my way to try to get some sushi, but then I was like, fuck, too much traffic. Um, so, I'm back home, and I actually just took his harness off the car because um, you can see here it's a wiring mess. Our junkyard only has about maybe three EFs, and they were all cut because I've been to all of them. And I am just going to repair this because this is not cut. It's just completely unloomed. So, what I'm going to do is just pretty much route them into their new homes and zip time in place like I've mentioned in my dual point video um, he has either an ECU or or an injector problem because I traced the wire from the driver's side tower to the ECU there's no brakes in there they're all um, getting connection I traced all the wires from the resistor box from the plug tower plug through the engine harness to all of the injectors, they are all getting signal. Um, either false injectors, which I highly doubt because they don't just all go out at once. Um, they're not firing because I pulled the spark plug after every crank. None of them are wet. None of them smells like gas. 
and the other culprit I would probably guess would be the uh, ECU itself. It doesn't have a bottom plate, so I'm afraid like maybe all the solder had like, you know, exposed to sitting on top of like something metal and like shorting everything out. But I didn't open it because, you know, I just, it was dark and I don't like working in the dark because it just makes things more complicated. So I'm gonna um, organize this harness zip tie all into place so it's less haggard for me to mess with when I go back to his house. I'm gonna grab one of my OBD1 uh, ECU that were known working ECUs to go back and diagnose that and do kind of like process of elimination. Um, shit like this, it bums my mind because like the car ran when I left perfectly fine and then not long after it it doesn't work anymore but um i'm sorry if this video is not as entertaining but um you know like i said i just kind of want to share a little bit of my daily adventures with you guys so if you guys like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you guys want to see that hatch uh, appear on my channel later because our goal is to get it running so we can get it ready for next season please subscribe and always guys race it break it fix it repeat it peace